Hello there. Today we're going to be looking at the EMI, the external MIDI instrument, a MIDI loopback and a control surface. Basically what we're going to be looking at is how these three relate to each other. So let's have a look at the EMI in more detail. We've got a pitch and mod wheel, we've got a program and this is really to do with external instruments where we can actually change patches. We've got a CC assign there which is the uh, control change and that's quite an important one because we use that a lot for when we want to send CV data out and we've got a MIDI channel. Probably the most important um, aspect of the EMI will be which MIDI port we're talking out on. So every MIDI port can have a, a MIDI channel from 1 to 16 so that's what MIDI supports. Now you may look at this now and you may have nothing set up there at all. It comes down to what hardware you're using. If you've got MIDI loopback already installed, you just can start to see the MIDI loopback ports. Obviously, MIDI uh, loopback has to be running in the background. If we flip to the back of the rack, we've got our gate and CV in for sequencer control. So that's all the step controls. We've got a pitch bend and a mod wheel in as well. And we've got this assignable. The assignable ones, uh, again, this is how we're going to get our CV data in and we get it converted over to MIDI. So what is a, a MIDI loopback? Well a MIDI loopback is very straightforward. It's, it's, it's a little program which presents itself a MIDI port so an application like Reason can actually hook onto it and then just takes that MIDI data in and just spits it straight back out again. And hence that's why we call it a loopback. It hasn't really gone anywhere. I happen to use a, a loopback called a Loop MIDI. I'll put the in the link of where you can get it from. You just literally install it. There's no configuration you have to do on these softwares. You just install it. The only configuration that we will go through a little bit later is just assigning you uh, MIDI ports. And it's that straightforward. For, for Mac users, again, I'll put in a description of how you can actually set up a MIDI loop back on your Mac. The last piece of the puzzle is the control surface. And we're going to set ourselves up a real basic MIDI controller here. And what we do with that is we're going to assign that to the loopback port we're going to set up later. So hopefully you've got your MIDI loopback software installed. So I'm going to start there and I'm actually going to set myself a new port up here and I'm just going to call it My Reason Test. And if we flip back into Reason and if we put in an EMI and if we use the drop down for the MIDI ports, you can see there My Reason Test. So I just select that. So that means that any data I'm going to send out is actually going to go to, the, to that MIDI port to the loopback device. What we've got to set ourselves up now is a control surface. So from Reason, go into Edit, Preferences, go into the Control Surface tab, click on Add, and then at the bottom we've got our MIDI input, and we're going to make the same what we've made in our loopback, which is My Reason Test. And just to keep things tidy, and I know where I, you know what my controllers are, I'm going to uh, rename the name, and I always put the name of my MIDI port in there. You don't have to do that, as I say, that's just a personal preference thing I do. Now at this stage, this should be set up in working, and we can do a very, very quick test. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to throw a Thor in here. Let's make a quick change, and. What I'm going to do is right click and I'm going to lock my new surface controller uh, where I set up. So there is my reason test which I'm going to lock to my Thor. I'm now going to give the external uh, MIDI instrument focus and then I'm going to just play a couple of keys. And sure enough I can hear my Thor playing and that's, that's it set up. Um, I wouldn't recommend setting it up this way just to record data because you could just record data straight into the sequencer this is purely for a quick audio audio test you can hear it working and you know you're, you're up and running so let's have a quick look at a couple of examples of what we can you know really do with this and show you how this is actually a, a very powerful setup i'm just going to quickly just take this lfo here and Flip round to the back, we'll just take the LFO out and put it into the CC in. What we're going to do now is turn it on and obviously you need to choose your CC number and obviously I've, I've got number two here. Um, I know that's a breath control. Um, so now this LFO 
is obviously talking to my EMI, which is going out to my loop back. My surface controller is now um, bringing that data in. And so it's, it's a bit like I'm, you know, I've got an external keyboard and I'm, I'm typing away. So if I now right click on this and do a edit remote override, you can see it's, it's getting that signal in. If I click OK, you can see we've got some movement here. So I can turn this level up, we get the full length. One thing to just to be a little bit wary of is, and it catches some people out, is this little control here, because obviously this is also the assignment. This is like a, I think a bit like a reverse trim really, uh, on the back of the device. This is actually uh, going to take this CC number, sorry, this CV number, and this CV number, and it adds them together. So if I start to whack this up, you can see we're, we're really up the, at the full end. Um, obviously the LFO is still taking effect, and the more I apply the LFO, the more effect it's going to have. But it's a good way of, of using this too and say, oh, actually, I only want this particular range I want to affect. So between these two, you can actually get quite good ranges going on. Now, don't just stop there. Oh, as, as I say, because it's like a, a, it's a MIDI controller coming in, of course, we can record this. So I can just quite simply hit record. And if we come down here, you can see the signal going. And we can just actually turn it up a little bit. And the other thing is, again, because it's a CV signal coming in, or it's, um, it's like a MIDI sorry, signal coming in, anything you can take an, a remote override, like the York track here, we can override it. In fact, I should just turn this signal just down a little bit. And every time that goes up, we're getting a new track made. Yeah, so the LFO is now creating loads of alternate tracks. So if you stop to think about it, all we need to do is put a little signal in here and we can actually on the end of a loop. And I've got a video about that. But again, don't stop there. We can uh, edit over, road, override this um, volume. So we've now got that being overridden. We could obviously override the tempo, you know, anything where you can go in and there's a, an edit over, you know, edit remote override, you can take control of. So you're not just limited uh, to the instruments, um, you can obviously do it to effects, uh, there'd be obviously some utilities. Um, you've got your players, you know, again, so, you know, if I've got my player here, we can come in, we can edit, override this control. And you know, so you can have a lot of fun with this, you know, and with an IDT instrument, say for an example, is obviously there's no CV in on them. So um, you rely on obviously their matrices and if they haven't got a very good matrix, then again, you know, you could control every single knob and button uh, using this kind of method. So it's a very, very powerful method. And once you've set this up once, once you've obviously got that, that loop back set up, it is a case of just opening up a new project, slapping in your EMI, point it to your, your loop back MIDI port, and you're up and running. And it is that quick, you know. Um, as I said, again, there's a number of videos I'm doing which use this method, you know, this sort of common method. Um, so please watch them and get some more ideas. Thank you very much for watching.